This hilltop is the perfect place for me to build my home. I can see the entire island from here. I'm lit. Farquhar, come see this. Excuse me, is this Fort Kenning? You're not uh, Farquhar. Sir so Stanford Raffles? Wow, you look so young. It's an honour meeting you, sir. But uh, I've got to get back. I'm getting registered. Getting married. <laughs> See you. Nice bow tie. Although it's now better known for where the Registry of Marriages is, Fort Canning Hill in the 19th century was known as Government Hill, the home to our founder, Sir Stamford Raffles. However, the residence of Raffles was soon replaced by a fort in 1861. The fort was built and named after then Governor General Viscount Charles John Canning, but it was demolished in 1907, having never seen a war before. In 1926, the administration building of the British Far East Command HQ was built on Fort Canning, but it was then occupied by the Japanese in World War II. In 1966, the building was handed over to the Singapore Armed Forces. The Singapore Command and Staff College or SCSC was established here. The aim of the college then was to train all SAF officers so that we can fill in critical appointments in that and SAF top positions. We have to raise the SAF as quickly as possible to a level that can provide security for Singapore. When XSC was formed, we lost trained soldiers, senior officers because 75% of our troops were British and Malaysians. We were so junior and we have to start everything from scratch. We don't have enough trainees to attend the course. We don't have logistics. We don't have anything. But then we have to survive under a very critical condition at the time. For officers that went to SCSC, the entire course proved to be a huge challenge. Colonel Tan Ping An started his SCSC course in 1977. So how was the training like at SCSC? It is a very hectic, very vigorous, a very challenging program of seven months. In the course of planning, we have to really go into a lot of details and sometimes we study terrains right into the middle of the night in order to come up with practical plans for the execution by the troops. Of course, where we can't go home, we will have to just stay in camp. We just have to do what we have been tasked to do as if it was in an operational setting. So I think we all took the course very seriously because we felt that the defence of Singapore was a very important commitment that we have to make. How is the SCSC a good place for you guys to interact and bond? This is the kind of comradeship that we were able to build during the course. It is not just during the course, but when we do our runs, our recreation, and even our little drinks in the officer's mess, huh? This was opportunities for us to bond. To bond. Yes. The bonding is very important. Well, it has been 40 years since we have completed the course together. We do keep in touch and occasionally we still have our physical coffee sessions. <laughs> the Singapore Command and Staff College moved to Marina Hill in 1976 and then to Salita Camp in 1981. From 1995 onwards, it was located in the Safti Military Institute. It was renamed the Gold King Sui Command and Staff College in 2011 in honour of Singapore's first Defence Minister, the late Dr Goh King Sui, who was a firm believer in the importance of developing quality leadership in the SAF. The SCSC building then went through several organisation changes. Can you describe the transformation of this place? When the Command and Staff College moved out, it became squash courts for Sports Council, into the, uh, gradually into the Fort Canning Country Club, Legends Country Club, and finally today, Hotel Fort Canning. Can you describe the conservation efforts behind this building? As you can see this building, 
It has um, the influence of military architecture. In the past, when it was the Command and Staff College for the Echelon in the Army, the corridors to this building was a place where the highest rank officers in the country used to interact with each other before and after the lessons. So we said, was there an opportunity for us to convert the balconies into living rooms? We actually restored and turned them into a gateway feature, like a picture frame for every window to look out into the nature, which is Fort Canning. I'm very happy to say that the owner was, was bestowed the URA Heritage Award for this project. For me personally, these immaculate facades tell not only the story of our colonial past, they also remind me of a certain calibre of men. Men with a strong sense of values and matter. Men who uphold the highest standards of leadership and also serves as an inspiration for others to give their very best for Singapore.